So, good evening and welcome to the, our fifth of our series on, of guided prayer for Lent. An early saint, uh, St. John Climacus, said, Prayer is a gift given to those who pray. So the more we pray, therefore, the better we will do it. And so I'd like this evening to say, to say something on, uh, on growing in prayer. Christian prayer is always directed to a person in a living relationship. And like all relationships, it's either growing or it's dying. Julian of Norwich, an English um, medieval mystic, wrote, No words can describe the tenderness with which our Lord devotes himself to our spiritual growth. And in the prophet Jeremiah we read, I have plans for you, plans of fullness, not of harm, to give you a future and a hope. When you call to me, I will listen to you. So our God is always working for our spiritual growth. He never forces us, but is always inviting us to meet with him. But we can block his plans. Many people would say that distractions in prayer are their main obstacle, but this is not true. The Lord understands our weakness and he makes great allowances for us in our distractions. So as soon as you notice them, just ignore them and turn back to him. Maybe even with a little apology, because you know, when you're with someone, it's at least bad manners to go off and look out a window. But the real blocks to our spiritual growth are any sinful habit or a lack of forgiveness of others or a lack of charity. These are to prayer as water is to fire. As water puts out fire, so they will extinguish our prayer. The real test for our growing in prayer is always to ask ourselves, Am I becoming a kinder and more compassionate person, more loving person? Again, the prophet Hosea, the Lord said, What I want is love, not sacrifices, knowledge of God, not holocausts. So how we live our lives outside of our prayer is very important for how we are in prayer. They are not two separate compartments which should be interwoven so that we pray out of our lives and live out of our prayer. As we grow in prayer, we will focus more and more on the presence of God with us. In the book of Exodus we read, What great nation has its God as near to us as our God is to us? And St. Teresa of Avila, that great teacher in prayer, wrote, all the harm comes from not truly understanding that he is near, but in imagining him far away. She said, the Lord is within, and we should be there with him. So since our God is all of the time within us and all around us through his spirit, then we are already in his presence. To pray is simply to come into a greater awareness of that presence. In an early sermon, Pope Francis said that the presence of God is the most true, the most good, the most important thing in the world. And faith in that presence is key to our encountering him. A lay psychologist, Dr. Jack Dominion, wrote that awareness of another person is at the heart of relationship and at the heart of prayer, which is concerned with the sense of the presence of God. And you know, with us, there is often a big gap between knowing something and being aware of it. Our encounter with God in prayer will involve some thinking and some words expressing our thanks and our longing and at times some silent adoration. But we have to be careful about not thinking too much in prayer. St. Teresa of Avila wrote that prayer is not in thinking much, 
but in loving much. So prayer is not a time for mulling over and thinking what the words of scripture mean. This could distract us. When we start asking questions of things like that, we distract ourselves. And when we begin thinking about how we should be kinder to someone that we know, then we risk moving away from the Lord to that person and moving and forgetting who is here with us in the prayer. St. Teresa of Lisieux, on being asked what she said in prayer, replied, Nothing, I'm just loving him. As one writer put it, in prayer, when you are thinking, you are with yourself. When you are loving, you are with God. Being human, we cannot always be in a state of loving awareness of God and continue to express this from our hearts. In prayer, we have to be patient with ourselves and patient with our God too. As the psalmist wrote, be still before God and wait in patience. In our dialogue with him, we acknowledge our helplessness and lack of faith, and we ask him again and again to reveal himself to us as he promised he would, and he always keeps his promises. We know this will happen, provided we don't block his working in us. Our encounter with our friend should always be peaceful and without strain. When we run out of words to say to the Lord, it is then that he says to us, I don't need your words. All I want is your company and your love. We have simply to let our God be God for us. And so for our prayer this evening, I'd like to take the cure of the blind man at Bethsaida in Mark chapter 8. And I want to say a little bit about this uh, beforehand because the less talking I do once you start the prayer, the more time you have for silent speaking to the Lord. In this gospel passage, Jesus decides to act out a little parable about our spiritual growth. And it brings out in a marvelous way the extraordinary compassion, gentleness, and sheer humanness, the sheer humanity of Jesus. A blind man is brought to Jesus and instead of simply saying to him, receive your sight, which he could have done, he deals with him in a completely different way. He leads them away from the village and then he places his hands on the blind man's eyes a couple of times using spittle like ointment and slowly the man begins to see, to see clearly. What actually happened can be told in one or two sentences, but if we tease it out by imagining the scene, it speaks much more about the kind of person that Jesus is. And so, always as in a gospel scene, we keep our focus on Jesus. He's the person, the most important person in it, and he's the person who's there with us now, alive and risen. He is the person we speak to. So he takes this blind man complete, they'd never met before, and he leads him out of the village. And how do you lead a blind man? You, you link him by the arm, and the blind man has to trust in the person linking him. Where are we going? And here he is. But who is this that's doing this, that's leading him? He's being led by God. So that scene, to just sit with that, that whole freeze frame, that picture, Jesus leading this blind man out of the village, away from the hustle and bustle, from his, away from his previous life of, of maybe of begging, of, of whatever went on. And the village is kind of symbolic of all of the, the past, in a sense. Um, so again, we see the care for the, for the individual. And the blind man needs to be patient and simply allow Jesus to work upon him because Jesus doesn't instantly cure him. Many of our requests, there's often, they're not granted immediately. God knows best in his own way. And so, at, but at the end, the man now sees clearly 
and finds himself looking upon the face of the Son of God. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek, as the psalmist write. At the end, he tells the man, don't go back into the village. Don't go back to your old ways, to selfishness, to being careless about prayer, etc., etc. It's a change. You, this day is the new beginning of a new life for you, new day. There's so many things that we can just have and imagine with the Lord and saying that comes to mind in, in, in it, you know. So we'll begin our, our prayer now and I just expose the Blessed Sacrament. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Lord Jesus, we come now before you to spend this time in your company. We thank you for this privilege. We ask you, Lord, to teach us to grow in prayer, to, to, te to help us, Lord, to come to know you more, so that we may love you more and follow you more closely in our lives. We ask you, Lord, to lead us in our lives closer to you. Mary, our mother, help us to grow in prayer and to persevere in prayer. O Holy Spirit, lead and guide us. Amen. So we listen now to our first song. Thank you. 
Now is the time for prayer. Now nothing else matters. Now nobody is important but God. And from St. Anselm, come now, fly for a moment from your affairs. Escape for a little while from the tumult of your thoughts. Abandon yourself for a little to God and rest for a little in him. And they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to him a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands upon him, he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then again he laid his hands upon his eyes, and he looked intently and was restored, and saw everything clearly. And Jesus sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. And they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought to Jesus a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity takes this blind man who had never met Jesus before, takes him by the hand and leads him away from the crowd and from out of the village. Stay with that image, speaking to the Lord, whatever comes to mind for a moment or a few moments. From Psalm 36, the Lord guides the steps of a person. He makes safe the path of one he loves. Though he stumble, he will never fall, for the Lord holds him by the hand.
from Isaiah. When you were a child, I loved you. I led you with leading strings of love. I was like someone who stoops down to an infant. I gave you your food. I led you with leading strings of love. Jesus led him by the hand out of the village. Psalm 15 You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. And Jesus took some spittle and rubbed it on the eyes of the blind man and laid his hands upon him. And he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Our God works patiently with us over time. We do not get instantly everything we ask for, even though he hears every prayer. No words can describe the tenderness with which our Lord devotes himself to our spiritual growth. Jesus is so fully human, he takes some of his own spittle and rubs it like ointment on the eyes of the blind man. 
and then lays his hands upon him again. This human Jesus, who is also our God. Then again Jesus laid his hands upon his eyes and the man looked intently and was restored and saw everything clearly. The blind man sees again and the first thing he sees finds himself looking into the face of Jesus Christ the Son of God. As the psalmist wrote, it is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. And Jesus sent the man way back to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. Do not go back to the old ways that you were before. Your life has now changed. As every real encounter with our Lord changes us, even that little bit. And so as we draw towards the close of our prayer, we come now to the, to the petitionary part. Jesus has told us to ask for all our needs and our asking is praise of God, for everything comes to us from God. We pray for all our needs. We pray for peace in our world again, especially in the Ukraine, and for a good outcome of these negotiations. For this we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Some of these prayers I take from the evening prayer of the church this Thursday. Nourish the faithful with the food of Christ's word. Feed them with the bread which is his body. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Grant that we may respect the dignity of every person redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, 
Let us never violate their rights or their conscience. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Save people from the blind pursuit of wealth. Make them sensitive to the needs of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for your own special intentions. And we pray for all those that you may wish to bring before the Lord now in imagination and ask him to reach out and touch them with those same healing hands that he used with the blind man. We do that for a moment or two now in the silence. We unite together in praying for each person that we have brought before the Lord. For these, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask the intercession of Mary, our mother, as we pray, speaking to Mary. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise in our prayers and our petitions, but in your clemency, who and answer them. Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask you now for your blessing upon us and upon all those for whom we have prayed and who have asked our prayers. And our closing prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of this time spent in your company, knowing that every moment with you changes us and blesses us. You came, Lord, to lead us to our heavenly home, to show us the Father, and to win all the graces that we could ever need. We thank you for all that you have done for us through your life, death, and resurrection. We ask, Lord, that you give us the grace to persevere in prayer to learn how to listen to you and to be with you. Mary, our mother, we ask that you bring us closer to your Son, who is the only true source of peace in our world. O Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. Let us praise the Trinity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So we listen now to the final wor the words of our final song. Bless.
bless the Lord at all times. His praise ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord, for He hears the cry. So we just sit for a moment in the quiet and just aware of the peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So thank you for joining us this evening and we have our sixth then on next week. Good night and God bless.